Okay, so here we are. Uh, this game is going to be industrial. It's another my foray into uh, some Euro games that I was able to pick up, hunt down cheap. This one doesn't seem to have a, a great deal of favor in terms of its geek rating, except it's not bad for that. Now, reading the rules, I'm left with kind of a puzzlement about what the game's going to be like. Let me explain sort of the mechanism in the game. It's an auctioning game. Hey, I think I got the term right. Maybe. It's a worker placement game. <laughs> no. <laughs> work. Um, okay. So, the goal is to collect certain points, which look like they're mainly going to be generated in the end game. I can't guarantee that because I've never played. Um, we're going to turn four of these up at the beginning. And this is going to be from the first arrow we're marked here. There'll be five arrows in the game. And uh, <coughs> in each turn, and there'll be three turns in each era, starting with the first player, and of course I will move counterclockwise instead of clockwise as I always do, just to show that I'm not entirely here in case any of you had any suspicion about that. Um, okay, so in each of these turns we go around in the following uh, set of actions. and They're laid out rather simply here. And each player does these in order, more or less. Uh, first is a distribution of earnings. Everybody gets a buck. That's one of these little gray things. A dollar, a dollar, a dollar. These are fives. Whoop, whoop. This is to show who the first player is in any given round. Uh, okay. The second thing that happens is a bunch of cards are turned up. Well, I can hand that buck out just to give you a start. Of course, I am explaining the rules at the same time. I don't usually do that. Usually, I do the intro without starting play. But... Uh, that's all I'm doing here. Okay, so we turn over these four cards, and that's the set that's available for this guy to start auctioning. Now, if he buys any of those cards, he can no longer auction. But as long as he's holding the auction mark, uh, well, as long as he's holding the auctions, i.e. He hasn't bought a card, he can select one of these cards, and we have no idea what they mean right now, and Everyone else gets one chance to bid in order. They can bid up to their cash on hand. Um, the highest bidder, and you always have to beat the preceding bid if you want to bid, otherwise you have to pass. Well, the person holding the auction has the option to overbid the highest bidder, in which case the money goes into the bank, and this is a pretty standard mechanism. Or, if they want to sell that card to the, high, to the other highest bidder, to the, the person, well, to the person with the highest bid because they haven't bid yet, right? Uh, if they want to sell that card to the highest bidder, they can do so and they get the cash from that auction. So there's an advantage to selling cards. You get more and more cash. Of course, you kind of want cards yourself, so you got to make that kind of decision. And that, that's pretty common, I think, in a lot of games. I, I don't own any others like this, I think. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, then after the entire set in this case, because it's a four-player game of four cards and a three-player game, it would be three. And those are the only numbers this supports. Uh, each player gets two, and I believe this is in order. Yeah. Um, oh, no, wait. Yeah. Uh, gets to play one to three of the cards that they've bought from their hand. Now, different cards have different ways that they can be built. Uh, so... Up here is a listing of any raw materials you must have. So here you must have holes, whatever that is. I do not know. Somewhere there's probably a translation. Yeah, there's a little card to help you with any language. So, well, holes is wood. Okay. Well, that's useful to know. So I would need to have wood in order to build this. In addition, I would have to pay the construction cost, which is over here. Uh, 
Here is some wood. If I bought that, I could turn that in and that would count as wood. Other options are, if someone has a factory that produces wood, uh, and that is not absolutely clear to me, how you, I don't see that this factory produces anything, it's an Eisenzer mine. Uh, Actually, I think that's the town, I'm not sure. But here it is. Um, I don't know. One would assume it produces something, but all I see is this little wheel, which I think is its victory point value. Uh, so I don't think that produces anything. I have no reason to believe from the understanding of the rules that it does. So I guess it's pretty much useless, except that it gives you two victory points. Okay, well, that's great. So, I don't have a great idea here what any of these cards are useful for, but what I do have is this set of rules, and we'll try to blunder through this. Okay, so the card also indicates some other things on it. I think this is a bonus if we manage to hook it up to little wavy lines, whatever little wavy lines are. You know, I love these games that try to make it all pictographically sensible so that they convert over the languages so that nobody can understand them very well. Uh, but certainly I will have more trouble there. Um, those are going to produce bonuses for any factories if you have those cards. And I'm not sure if that happens every turn. Because again, yeah. I guess. Yeah. These things make war games look easy. Uh Okay. Well, all right, so at some point or another, I get points for that. Damn knows when. Uh, let's see. That looks like it's only at the end of the game. That would be my guess. I'm not sure what these little symbols here indicate. Perhaps what is produced in that realm. One thing that I do know is if you cross the line between turns here, everybody gets money on the ones with money on them. Great. That's something the rules are very clear about. Okay. Um, there's special factories, the bank and stock exchange. One will hope that they're marked as special, but I don't know what this is. I don't know what it produces. It looks like it should produce something, I would assume. Maybe an Eisen's mine produces something. Because here it's an oil field, right? What's an Eisen's mine? Do we have that? Eisen's is iron. So I would guess that it produces iron, but we don't really know that, do we? I mean, that is not made at all clear in these rules, whether or not a mine produces what one would think it produces. We will assume that indeed it does. Name of the factory, raw materials needed for construction. Factory supplies this. Oh, no, this supplies nothing. Whatever an iron mine is, it don't supply iron. Okay, I can live with that. Doesn't say on the back, does it? No, the back just tells you which area it is. Okay, well, that's all great. So I can buy that and it's worth nothing. Except for the victory points. Okay. <laughs> I can own some wood. And if I hook it up to little wavy lines, whatever little wavy lines are, I don't know, maybe they're oceans, of course, there's ports in the game, but yeah, I would say they don't really make a lot of sense there. Okay, what's this thing? Well, this is a machining bave. That's over here, and that seems to be the only place that that exists. I can get a machining bave. Well, let's look that up and see what that is. Hmm. 
There it is, mechanical engineer. Well, that is actually um, not a factory. That's a technology. And technologies are only worth victory points, and you can only play them in the same era of the deck that they came from. You can't discover that technology in a later era. Someone else not playing, I guess, discovers it. Okay. Well, so, let's go back to how you pay for one of these things, right? Well, this, it looks like all you need is some halts, some wood, and you can have this technology. And You mark that with your little technology marker. This is assuming it's in your hand and paid for. This is how I'm going to play. The rules aren't very good with this. Uh, the Eisen's mine, I would have to have some holes, and I would have to have two dollars, which I'd pay to the bank, in order to get this card out and played. Great. All right. Well, let's look at what else we have. After everybody's gotten a chance to build and play cards, we move this. And then we go through the same sequence. Everybody gets a taller, everybody gets new cards. That all looks really, really easy. Except, of course, I've got kind of this, whoa, why doesn't this produce anything? And stuff like that. Now, certain eras, like I mentioned, give, you a, give everybody a buck when you switch to them. Basically, when all the cards of one are done, before the next turn, we move here. Nothing special happens there except we move to the new deck. When all the cards of two are done, we move here. The only special thing is everybody gets one power. That looks like about it. Now, there's a table on page four. Hmm. Not in. Oh, yeah. So, how do, you pay, how do you pay the raw materials on these? Well, so, what we said. you got to have a card... You have to have a factory, or if you don't have the material in hand, you have to have a factory which produces them. We notice this one doesn't produce anything. We expect that to be marked hmm, down here on a card. So that iron mine does not produce iron, but that's okay. We'll live with that. Um, another option is if someone has a factory, which produces the correct material, and you don't have another way to get it, you can pay them a dollar, and you get, you get to use their raw material for that. And then the final option is, on certain eras, if nobody has a factory that produces it, things are automatically available from the bank, and you can buy them from the bank instead of from another, well, because you can't buy them from another player, right? Okay, so in era two, stone, brick, and wood will all be available, okay? This all kind of makes some sense to me. I'm still disturbed that this iron mine doesn't produce iron, but I can live with it. At the end of the game, so remember, you're collecting points for these that you produce, and for these, as you put them down, you get points. But at the end of the game, and this is, I think, where the majority of points happen, you get points for money, bonus cards, and linked factories. Okay, the bonus cards are these things, and we have one of them up here, a little port. It looks like it costs a dollar to build. I'm not sure what that means. You have to have played them. And each of your factories showing that symbol gives you two extra points. So, for example, if I had wavy lines, whatever those are, uh, maybe it tells me here. Uh, maybe that's canal or a pipeline. No, it looks like it's got to be canal, right? Canal. Because this is the pipeline. Okay. Um... So, if I have those, I get two points each for each factory that uses that bonus card. I don't know where these bonus cards go. There doesn't appear to be a place on the board. I guess I play them in front of me. Yes. The cards played are played face up in front of the player. Oh, that looks like all the cards. If you play a card... Okay, well, that's not all very terribly clear, but I guess they're all played to face up in front of me. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know what the board is used for, I guess, to mark little things, because in the end, you have to worry about how your roads connect. 
And here's how this works. If you own factories or technologies that are linked by a road, you get three for each connection. Wow, what does that mean? Earl? It looks like you want to get this physical connectivity, and that's all you're caring about. And three for each connection? Um, it looks like every single road connection that you have gives you that bonus. Okay. That looks like a geographical challenge that can be very easily handled. I don't know how interesting this is really going to be. And then the final thing, if we can find the scoring, is for every three dollars you have... Oh, and these are treated kind of like, like the roads over here. Technologies are like physical geography in a sense that there's just this line that connects them and that makes them worth more. Okay, and then uh, for every three dollars you have, you get a point. And these go on your points bar as well. Whoever makes it the furthest in the little horsey race wins. Uh, if there's a tie, whoever's got the most cards played. Uh, if there's still a tie, the person with the most money wins. Okay, does it feel like there's much to this? Not terribly. It looks like there's the auction mechanism and then some weirdness going on over here that says, ah, this is how you win or not. And I think I see why the game is not rated terribly well. It's not, again, it's not horrible. It's in the sixes, I think. But in general, I've learned sixes are great for war games because lots of people shoot down war games no matter what. And I find some of my favorite games are ranging in the six and seven era, whereas they're pretty terrible for Euros. Maybe war gamers are just more discriminating than Euro gamers in terms of how they spend their points. Of course, it makes sense. Something like this probably takes about 40 minutes to play. Uh, you know, if I want to play, uh, I don't know, say DAC, that's going to take me a few months. You know, just personally, it's going to take me a few months. I mean, not straight through. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a big difference between a 60-hour or 100-hour game and a 45-minute game. It's much easier to say, yeah, I'd be willing to play that more often. Right? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so I've spent a lot of time babbling. I don't know how much information I've given you, but I've given you my first impression of what I think the rules mean. They're not terribly clear about it. And trying to deal with this as opposed to being natively printed in the language that I understand is going to make it more difficult. Of course, that's what happens when you deal with imported games, and I'm sure that you know, non-English speakers in other countries have the same gripe about games that are in English but with their own native rules. One just feels like that's perhaps not the best purchases, if that's the case. Uh, you probably, in, unless the game is truly fantastic, for example. The Azor Wish games, yeah, I don't mind that they're in French. Hey, French is pretty understandable anyway. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to load this up and then I'm going to give this a shot at playing. I don't have any great high hopes for it, but it is kind of pretty. I'll give it that much. 